Welcome to the service of worship as part of the ministry of Chapel in the Pines Presbyterian Church. My name is Andrew. It is my privilege to serve as pastor of this congregation and a grace that wherever you are, you have chosen to worship with us. This service marks our celebration of creation, the creation that is a gift of grace from the Creator, the very God in whom we live and move and have our being. This is always true. It's good to pause and bring that grace to mind, to remember God's incredible gifts all around us. The poet laureate Joe Harjo has a poem called Remember. I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship by hearing her words. Remember the sky that you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn. That is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father. He is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are. Red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are all earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them, they are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember you are all people. And all people are you. Remember you are this universe. And this universe is you. Remember all is in motion. Is growing. Is you. Remember language comes from this. Remember the dance language is, that life is. Remember. In this service, we remember the gifts of creation and the gracious creator who gives them. Let us remember that this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it.
One of my mentors and dear friends is the Reverend Dr. George Anderson, senior pastor at Second Presbyterian in Roanoke, Virginia. And George wrote this prayer that is so fitting for this celebration of God's creation. I invite you to join me. We believe that God created the heavens and the earth, that God brings the light of day and the darkness of night. We believe that creatures swim and fly and crawl and walk, that lilies of the field grow because God makes it so. We believe that God made all of us and there is in each of us a child who reflects something of God. We believe that God sees all that is made and all that lives and says, beautiful. We believe that nothing God makes is ever lost to God. So though there is morning and there is evening and there is birth and there is death, we remain forever God's. Amen. And now let us sing the faith for the beauty of the earth. For this service, I have written a new verse to that beloved hymn, a verse that serves as a prayer of confession. I invite you to sing it with me. For misuse of all the earth, for pollution of the skies, for the greed which from our birth teaches us to love our lives. Lord of all, to thee we plead, save us from our selfish greed. Indeed, save us, O Lord. And we pray to the creator of all, trusting that the God in whom we live and move and have our being makes new life possible. In that grace, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. It is a joyful refrain to sing. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Patrick, may the peace of Christ be with you. And I hear you. May the peace of Christ be with you.
Hi, good morning. I'm Susie from the Earth Care Committee, and today we're celebrating, celebrating Earth Week. And this is a happy day, a happy week. Uh, this morning, think back, what did you have for breakfast? Maybe an egg, maybe something like strawberries, an orange, cereal, all of those things come from God's creation. Everything we eat, everything we use comes from God's creation. God has made it. We're called to take care of God's creation. Through our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, we are now and have been for a few years now an Earth Care Certified Congregation. So what does that mean? It means that we're called to cherish the earth. That's in on the pledge that we make. What does that word cherish mean? Think back. Maybe it's a word that you remember from the day you were married, your marriage vows. Maybe it's a, some word that you remember from taking care of your children, you want to cherish your children. It's a special word. It's a word that comes from our heart, can be located in our heart. So uh, what we want to do is to think. We already, already are doing pretty good with our buildings, with Earth Care Congregation uh, certification. We have solar panels. When we come together, in a come together in a gathering and eat a meal, we compost, we're doing pretty well. But as you know, churches are not just buildings. They're not just Sunday morning. What they are is something that we believe. And the choices we make, the actions we take, that should reflect what we believe. We believe we want to choose to take care of creation. So when we go home, when we go to our neighborhoods, out in the workaday world, in the daily, daily lives that we lead, when we travel, we want to make choices that are cherishing the creation. So we have at our church an Earth Care Committee. I'm on that committee. Todd Adams is on that committee. Barbara Amago is on that committee. But our committee right now is just very, very small. And we need your help. We need your help because the Earth Care Committee is a committee that gives guidance, support, encouragement to the church to the people of the church for cherishing the earth. So I hope you will join us on that committee. And if not, think about cherishing the earth in your daily choices. Hello friends, now that it's spring, I love to go outside and discover all the new life that's revealing itself. Now, even though I usually go to places that I know well, I'm still surprised. Like in my garden, I found some plants that I thought were dead, mostly because my ducks had eaten them last year, um, were actually coming back to life. And then when I looked at one plant, I found this little friend trying to camouflage himself inside this thyme plant. Doing this makes me really happy. It amazes me and makes me so grateful to God, the Creator, for all of the beauty and life in the natural world. Now when we're grateful for something, when we experience something or receive something that gives us joy, we often want to say thank you. And we can just say the words thank you. But we can also show our gratitude through our actions. The most powerful thank you that we can give to God for the amazing creation around us is our actions. We can help care for creation just as God cares for us. And there's lots of different ways we can care for creation, and I know that you know many of them. So I want to encourage you as you spend time in nature and experience joy, that you remind yourself to show gratitude by caring for the natural world. Now this might mean doing something that has a big impact on the whole world. For example, in youth group, we were talking about ways that we can help reduce climate change. And one of the things we talked a lot about was eating a plant-based diet. This means reducing the amount of meat that we eat because we know that raising animals on farms sometimes can be damaging to the environment. 
or you might even want to do something that just impacts the little area that you live in. For example, you might decide to leave the dandelions and the creeping Charlie plants that pop up in early spring in your yard, not mowing them or, or picking them or killing them because these are something that bees use to eat from, to collect pollen before all of the other flowering plants start to bloom. Whatever you do, it is a gift of gratitude to God. By sharing for God's, or caring for God's creation, we show God that we are thankful for the beauty of this earth. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, your creation is amazing. We are grateful for this beautiful world. We promise to help care for it. Amen. Now I invite you to hear today's gospel reading offered by one of our church friends. Hello, my friends. Today's reading is John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of all the many biblical texts that describe God as creator, the most famous is found in the first book of the Bible, in the very first chapter. What's more, Genesis chapter 1 has got to be one of the most misunderstood parts of the Bible. Genesis is not a textbook seeking to provide a scientific explanation of how things came into being. Rather, it's poetry, ancient verses that seek to inspire us both to praise God, the Creator, and to appreciate with humility the role that we have been given as a part of the larger creation. Genesis does not describe a creation out of nothing, but rather opens on a scene of dark deep water. It is chaotic and God brings order. God separates the earth from the sky, the land from the sea, the night from the day. God brings order to the chaos. And then God creates all plant and animal life to thrive in this newly created order. Only then does God create humankind. And humans do play a special role. Out of all the creatures, only humans were created in the image of God. Clearly that's important. But how are we who are mortal, like the immortal God, 
How are we who are so limited in our powers, like the Lord Almighty? Well, some have suggested that humans have been given a special role. And yet, this role is precisely what is so often misunderstood. And it often comes down to one word, dominion. Verse 26 says that humans have been given dominion over all the earth. But dominion does not mean that humans were meant to rule given a divine sanction to do whatever we please to exploit and to harm other creatures and creation itself. The root meaning of the word dominion actually means to lower one's self, to descend, to come down. It's the opposite of lording over, but rather of becoming humble, becoming a servant to the greater good. Thousands of years after Genesis was written, we know the truth that the fate of humankind is directly tied to the health and well being of the rest of creation. And so, in light of Earth Day, last Thursday, I was heartened to see and hear bold calls for significant steps to reduce carbon emissions in the near future. Such care of the earth is biblical. It reflects humankind's unique and sacred responsibility to serve the health of the larger world. And this notion of service brings me to our gospel reading. The shepherd is an image of servant leadership. A shepherd ensures the health of the creatures entrusted to one's care. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The most famous poem in the Bible imagines God caring for us in that way, leading us to still waters and green pastures, providing what is necessary for us to live from the creation itself. We are called to do the same for our fellow creatures, for this shared creation where we all make our home. Elsewhere in the Bible, kings are described as shepherds of the people. Even as a king, a shepherd is not to lord power over the people, but rather provide for their well-being. Good leaders and good citizens likewise work for the common good, for the shared welfare of all. What does such service look like? In the Gospel of John, Jesus makes it clear. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Service involves sacrifice. What are we willing to sacrifice for the good of our planet? What are we willing to give up today for the sake of our fellow creatures and for those who will come in the future? Native Americans, like our poet Joe Harjo, live by the creed that every decision made today should be done with the future in mind those who will live seven generations from now. That is being a servant of the creation 
That is being a good shepherd. And that can bring us together. In our gospel reading, I was drawn to the words Jesus spoke about unity. He said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. They too will listen to my voice so that there shall be one flock, one shepherd. Too often with any issue, including climate change and earth care, we are too quick to divide ourselves into us versus them. The care of creation should not be divisive. We should be able to find common ground to curb carbon emissions, to ensure clean air and water, and to protect endangered species, including human populations that are so vulnerable from the effects of climate change. Yes, we as one people should be able to find common ground for we are all made of the same earth and we all share one planet. We have one creator. Let us be inspired to praise God and to appreciate with humility the sacred role that we have been given to care for God's creation, all of it, to care for creation as one people. May it be so.
There is one creator, Lord of all the earth. And so there is one creation and we are one people, one flock with one good shepherd. Therefore, I invite you to join me in the prayer that our good shepherd taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, fellow creatures of our God and King, go out into God's beautiful creation, believing that you were created in God's image. And so, you can be a part of the care of creation, that united as one flock, we can bring praise to our one shepherd by taking care by taking care of the earth and all that is within it. For this brings praise to God, our creator. And so may the grace of God, the love of Christ Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now, as long as you are on the earth and forevermore. Amen.
Zach, this is the sermon. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. A lot of pollen in God's creation. Go Tar Heels. All right. And three, two, one.